How's it going, YouTube? Happy holidays. Um, doing my first telescope review, uh, so bear with me. And uh, the review is going to be on this one right here. This is the Celestrum Power Seeker 70AZ. And the, uh, the reason why I want to do a review on this particular telescope is because uh, with Christmas upon us, uh, some of you might be out looking for last minute uh, Christmas gifts. You might be thinking about getting yourself or maybe your kids a telescope for Christmas. So I kind of wanted to do a, uh, a review on an entry level telescope, so to speak. Um, I've seen this one advertised for sale on Celestrum's website. I think it's running about $89.95. Uh, I've seen other websites run it as high as about $100. But I got this one for a particularly good deal at Walmart. They had it on sale for only like uh, $36. I thought it was a really good deal uh, for a telescope like this. Um, let's see, the box it comes in, you get some accessories with it. You get a 20 millimeter eyepiece, 10 millimeter, 4 millimeter. Uh, it comes with a red dot finder instead of a finder scope, which is actually pretty nice. Um, it has a three times Barlow lens. Uh, the diagonal is a direct image diagonal, which is nice. It's going to put your, all your images uh, right side up. So you could also use this telescope for terrestrial viewing as well. Uh, it also came with some software. Um, I haven't used the software yet. I'll have to take a look at it. I have the uh, diagonal. The red dot finder. Alt azimuth mount. Accessory tray. Three eyepieces. And the Barlow. I have to say all in all, I think for the money I paid for it, it's a really, really good deal. So I mainly got this one uh, for my kids to use. Because my 10-inch my new over here is way too tall for them to be able to look into. So I wanted to get something a little bit uh, down the earth for them to use. Of course, I have it fully extended on tripod right now. Just so I can be able to stand up and move around it better. Oh no, not too shabby. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the optical tube assembly. Uh, the aperture is 70 millimeters, which is about 2.8 inches. The focal length is 700 millimeters, so that yields a focal ratio of f10. It also has a direct image diagonal, which is nice, because not only can you look at the sky with this, but you can also take a look at uh, terrestrial objects as well. So the image that you see in the eyepiece will look as it does in real life. No mirrored image up, upside down. Uh, remember that. It was nice. Um, instead of a normal finder scope, it has a red dot finder, which is really nice. The reason for that is because most of the uh, finderscopes that come with the cheaper telescopes they're pretty much worthless. <laughs> uh, but this is much easier to use, which is good because if you have a, uh, a beginner budding astronomer, you definitely uh, want the thing to be user friendly. And basically, uh, after you get this aligned with your tube, just turn it on. And the uh, the laser diode puts a, a laser dot on this uh, glass screen. Of course, you probably can't see it in the camera because it's so dim. Well, you just align that dot onto whatever you want to look at. And then when you're looking through your eyepiece, you should be able to uh, see what you want to see. Of course, you just want to make sure you remember to turn it off when you're done so you don't run out of batteries. Um, one of the negatives about this particular telescope is the focuser tube. It is plastic, not metal. Um, you know, you could have some problems, you know, sagging focus your tube. You put a lot of uh, accessories on the back of it. And of course, it racks out forever and ever and ever, but it is, you know, 
a beginner's telescope. So I'm not expecting to be, you know, made bulletproof, but that's definitely a negative. And it does have a removable dew shield. There's the objective lens. It does have a focus at lock, which is this little knob right here. So when you get it, your image focused, you can turn this little lock knob and it'll keep the focuser still. That way you're not having to constantly focus your image. Alright, now we'll take a look at the mount. Now the mount is uh, alt asthma, which for a beginner is uh, definitely a plus. Um, equatorial mounts can be pretty daunting for a, the beginning astronomer just because of its complexity. So the fact this has an alt asthma mount is, is really nice. Right here is your um, azimuth locking knob. Loosen that up. You can turn the telescope left and right, which is an azimuth. And then we have the altitude adjustment, which enables you to turn the telescope up and down, or an altitude. And right here is the fine control for the altitude. Just by turning this thumb screw, you can slightly and slowly move the telescope up and down. And it gives you some fine, fine control. Not too bad. Uh, the tripod is a little different story. Um, I mean, it's adequate for the telescope, but the problem is, is that you get a lot of vibrations in it. I was actually going to go outside tonight and maybe get some video at the eyepiece to show you its uh, performance. But it's, it's just too windy outside. I did give it a go, but just way too much vibrations. And of course, it doesn't help that I have the legs fully extended either. But it's a little bit a little bit unstable. And we have the accessory tray where you put your eyepieces in. I'm going to go ahead and cover some of uh, the accessories that come with the telescope. By the way, that's my cat Newton. He's my, uh, my little assistant. You're right, buddy. Um, First things first, the the diagonal. It's nice that it's an erect image diagonal because you can use this telescope for uh, terrestrial use. And you can view off mountains and good stuff like that. But um, which is nice because, like I said, it does give the telescope a dual purpose. But the problem is, is that this particular you're supposed to be helping me. Uh, this particular diagonal is not exactly the highest quality, so. It, I think it's more or less going to be a weak link in the telescope itself. You're probably going to want to uh, maybe replace this with a better one. Just a suggestion. Um, the next thing, the uh, three times Barlow lens, this is pretty much useless. Okay. And the reason why it's useless is because for one, it's cheap, cheaply made. It's just plastic. I don't even know if the, if the lens and there is, is glass or plastic or whatever. It's, it's pretty bad. But with a, a telescope of this size, only 70 millimeters of aperture. 
see, even he doesn't like it. But uh, with a telescope of only 70 millimeters in aperture, the problem is that you're never going to be able to reach those high magnification levels, at least uh, of any usefulness, with a three times Barlow. I mean, it's you're talking about a lot of power there, and you're just not going to be able to, to use that much magnification in a telescope of such small aperture. And uh, even if you could, you know, even if you had a huge telescope, the problem is is that seeing conditions, sky transparency, all that good stuff, uh, more times than not, uh, it's never, never completely optimal for uh, for using that much magnification. So you'll, you'll probably never use this. Um, I'll probably end up just throwing this away. I have a regular two tons Barlow um, that I'll probably use with this telescope. So I won't even bother with that. Um, the next thing, the eyepieces that it comes with are pretty cheap as well. I would probably replace these as, as quick as possible. Um, that'd probably be my first thing to replace actually would be these eyepieces. Uh, if you take a look on the eyepiece, I don't know if you can see that. The camera's not really one to pick up a lot. Anyway, it says uh, 20 millimeters on it. That's your focal length for the eyepiece. And before the 20 is a letter H. Well, the letter H means that it is a, um, a Huygens design eyepiece. Um, the eyepiece was developed by Christopher Huygens way back in the day. Um, and basically it's just an outdated design. Uh, it's not really good to use with uh, telescopes of, uh, or at least modern telescopes that have um, shorter focal lengths because what happens is, is you get a really small field of view and uh, the eye relief is just very very short. You pretty much have to have your eyeball touching the lens in order to get the, the full field of view. Um, and optically you know, it's, it's not the best quality so you're probably going to want to to get these um, replaced as soon as possible. And of course you get the lens cap to keep the, uh, the objective lens clean. It even comes with a, a uh, an opening so you can stop down the aperture if you wanted. You could actually take some, uh, some solar filter material, some film, and cover up this hole and uh, you can have a nice homemade solar filter. I'll, I'll get into that eventually, maybe in the summertime coming up, and go into how to make a solar filter. You want to make sure you do that safely, by the way. Uh, never look at the sun, the telescope, without a solar filter. It's a pretty good way to destroy your vision. So, um, oh, and it did come with some software. Def Notice that, the Sky First Light Edition. Um, I have not used it yet, so I really don't know anything about it. Maybe eventually I'll throw it on my computer, run it, and see what it's all about, and maybe I'll do a nice little review on that. So that's what you get in the box. All that stuff right there. The three times Barlow. Just chuck it. The uh, direct image diagonal. Three cheap eyepieces. Um, your lens cover. The OTA, your all thousand mount, the accessory tray, and the uh, the laser dot finder, which, like I said, that's probably I think a good thing. Um, I've used it a couple times, and uh, I like it to the point where I'm actually maybe taking it off this telescope and putting it on my big one over here. That's what you get. So, how does it perform? Well, given that it's at a beginner's price point and that it's only got 70 millimeters of aperture, I have to say it performs pretty good. I actually exceeded my expectations for such a small little scope. Um, the fact that it is 70 millimeters, it's going to definitely limit what you can see with it. Uh, you'll be able to see the moon, obviously. Um, the brighter planets like Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Venus, Mars. Um, 
even some of the brighter deep sky objects I think you'll be able to, uh, to see those as well like I said I've only taken it out twice and uh, but when I have taken it out I've seen Jupiter through it which was pretty nice um, the moon looks spectacular through it so if anything else uh, you can definitely use this for looking at the moon. It does give some really nice crisp images of uh, of the moon. I've also seen um, M42, the Orion Nebula, and I've also seen M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, and uh, those look uh, definitely. You could definitely tell what they were. They look pretty good. Um, like I said, that the only the only chink in the armor, so to speak. Uh, it's going to be the eyepieces for sure. You're definitely going to need to get some better eyepieces to get the, the most out of this telescope. And maybe, like I said, even uh, upgrade that diagonal. But uh, I think overall it performs uh, pretty admirably for such a little scope. Um, like I said, the fact that you know it's only 70 millimeters, it's going to limit what you can see. But uh, like I said, the bright planets, moon, some of the brighter um, uh, deep sky objects. Um, I haven't tried out any binary stars yet. I don't know how well it splits binaries. I'll have to take it out eventually and maybe uh, try again on making a, a video on its performance. But um, I think, like I said, overall it it's, does pretty well. Um, as far as the optics go, like I said, uh, it is coded. The images seem to be pretty good. Uh, there is a lot of chromatic aberration though, um, which for me it's kind of kind of hard to, to bite the bullet on that because I'm used to to using you know a Newtonian reflector. Uh, the only aberration I really have to deal with with the newt is uh, mainly coma. So you know you might be able to to overlook the chromatic aberration a bit. Um, it's really not big of a deal, but just for my taste, I it kind of kind of hard for me to to digest that, I should say. <laughs> like I said, overall, it's uh it's pretty good.